uh, how is actually uh, Indonesia um, Indonesia national value works in our foreign policy because as we know uh, six of the seven presidents of Indonesia are Japanese and I saw that so I saw I see how most of them actually uh, more like a Japanese leader than an Indonesian leader itself. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Martin, would you please answer the question from Ms. Anissa? Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Anissa, uh, to ask question. The first question is, what is Indonesian foreign policy, active and independent, is uh, relevant in the uh, current situation? I think still relevant, but we know the situation uh, in international system that every every government or regime, I think, is very different. And we know uh, if we look uh, the current situation in international issues, uh, uh, many many big countries or dominant countries uh, want to influence in in area Pacific in Asia Pacific. Because we know that uh, area Asia Pacific yes, include the uh, Asia Tenggara or South East Asia and East Asia also include uh, Australia and New Zealand and also we know in the in the the close issues in several days at that now we know uh, issue about AUKUS. How is uh, the big countries or several countries, for example, like uh, United Kingdom, also um, Australia and United States, uh, to to make a balancing in uh, area Asia Pacific, they uh, build alliances that uh, you know uh, they have a weapon nuclear that. Uh, can threaten uh, many countries in this area, and also uh, Indonesia have uh, have attitude or respond about um, situation at the time. And Indonesia mostly not like Singapore or Philippines that uh, want to join in this alliance, but uh, Indonesia and several countries in ASEAN uh, have. Um, respond to still independent and active to to make the question is how is the position in Indonesia? Indonesia will give respond pin weakening, uh, balancing, or we have bargaining. I think it's uh, the fundamental question. If uh, Indonesia give respond pin weakening, Indonesia must follow the. That, that country who have a powerful in military and economic, I think uh, we know in the situation in um, in the Middle East eh, that when when for 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 the example like Afghanistan, when the position been weakening to to one of several countries, I think uh, the situation not very. Not not very good and ma many chaos in every place and everywhere at that uh, country. So I think it's very important. Uh, Indonesia must keep the 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 attitude or the position to free and active. I think free not just because if uh, we know the concept is a balancing. Balancing is a uh, is uh, the close concept like Indonesia passive, right? Because if uh, Indonesia have position balancing, we must we must uh, arrange the position uh, regarding the strong countries, for example, America or China. And I think it's uh, uh, the 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 concept close with the with the passive. But I think Indonesia must active. We must also promote, and we 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 also independent to to keep to keep in Indonesia in order that Indonesia 
uh, become not not country like in the Middle East, and we must keep uh, uh, independent and also free active. And about uh, infestation, infestation. I think now many infestation eh, from several countries, but we have uh, the close infestation. I think uh, many infestation in Indonesia, maybe still United States, European Union, and China. But uh, in order to Indonesia have uh, many infestation for many countries, I think Indonesia must still keep the independent and we must not influence or um, intervention many countries into the Indonesia. And the second question about national Indonesian value. National Indonesian value, uh, we know the, the biggest population in Indonesia centralized in Java. And also, I think it's uh, also depend on election channel because the population also can decide who is the become uh, Indonesia president. And many several president in Indonesia identity in Java, but uh, according in the research, researcher about foreign policy, uh, the leader very, very, very strong characteristic leadership Javanese is uh, just only in the at that moment Suharto. Yeah? I think Suharto uh, become from and uh, live in Solo like uh, like uh, President Joko Widodo now President Indonesia and many similar several characteristic. For the example, to if uh, the president speaks, speaks not 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 very obvious. Uh, when 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 the president speaks is very diplomatic, because to respect and want to want to give a, give a, a bad situation to the other countries. I think it's a is a characteristic uh, Japanese background in the president Indonesia and also give impact or influence to relation Indonesia with the other countries. Because um, the people or the president have the background uh, Japanese, they believe if uh, the power central in the world is in Java. That's why we know uh, many kingdom in Java, for example, in Jogja or in the Surakarta, the name kingdom is uh, Hamengku Buwono. Hamengku Buwono is sit in the world, Hamengku, sit. And Buwono is a uh, art or word. It's mean um, in in traditional belief in Java that uh, all the thing about in the world is central in the the Java island. That's it. I give came back in the for for the moderator is my answer. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Martin, for the answer. We are going to move to the other uh, questions. It's coming from. Evelyn, so Miss Evelyn, uh, you may ask it directly to Mr. Martin. Hello, is my voice clear? Yes. Okay, uh, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to ask a question to Mr. Martin. Uh, I would like to ask what are the strengths and weaknesses of Indonesia's foreign policy and how to deal with the flaws as we know that nothing is perfect and uh, how do we seek for the better Indonesia's foreign policy? That is my question. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Evelyn, for the question. 
Uh, Mr. Martin, will you please answer the questions from Ms. Evelyn? The question is, uh, what's the strength and weakness in Indonesia foreign policy? I think uh, Indonesia foreign policy have modality. Modality that Indonesian foreign, foreign policy uh, could be increased and Indonesia could achieve the goal in the national interest. Many several strengths, for the example, is Indonesia is the role model, the biggest, the, 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 I think the fourth, the fourth biggest Muslim population in the world. I think is also modality. And uh, though Indonesia, many population Muslim, but Indonesia also, we have many uh, several culture. Pluralism, it's also modality. Because if we know the trend of uh, political system in the world is democracy. The book, democracy is the basis of uh, pluralism. That's why uh, many countries uh, look Indonesia, the good, in, the good country democracy because uh, we have many population Muslim and we have also many many ethnicity, many culture, pluralism, and uh, until now I think um, uh, many countries also look Indonesia is very stabilized in the country and democracy. Though uh, in the several days ago, uh, a little country, Vanuatu, give a criticize to Indonesia about issue uh, Papua. But I think um, it's very sensitive issue. And uh, if we talk about Papua, there are also many issues about human rights, about military, and also separatism. I think it's uh, the strength, and we must uh, must keep the strength of the modality of uh, Indonesia's foreign policy. And the weakness, I think weakness is um, many ethnic in Indonesia. I think uh, not very easy to, to make building integration, many ethnicity. I think it's a weakness. For the example, uh, in Papua also, uh, the one of uh, ethnicity that want to spirit from Indonesia. And I think uh, also several ethnicity that issue disintegration. I think uh, it's also um, about weakness foreign policy that uh, Indonesia government must control and keep in order to Indonesia have stability. And if uh, Indonesia have stability in domestic situation, in political, I think it's also can support uh, about foreign policy in Indonesia. I think it's my answer. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Martin. Uh, we're going to move to the other questions. There, there is Rosana Argandari. So, Rosana, you may ask it directly to Mr. Martin. Okay, uh, before it, I'm sorry, I cannot open my camera and my video due to the errors. So uh, thank you for Mr. Martin for the material about the foreign policy. It's really interesting for me. And as you can see that all presidents has their doctrines. So I recognize that it have their system principle. So what is the biggest impact for Indonesia to have relation between another country, especially in foreign policy? And what is who is the president have biggest impact uh, regarding to police regarding to foreign policy? Thank you. Sorry, because uh, you have a voice in the outside, so your voice is not clear. Maybe you can uh, repeat again your question. Okay, I'm, I'm good right now. 
Okay. Okay, sorry. Um, so the question is, what is the biggest impact for Indonesia to have relation between another country, especially in a foreign policy? And who is the president have biggest impact for Indonesia regarding to foreign policy? Is it clear? Okay. I, I, I try to, <clears throat> to understand your question. Okay. What is the biggest impact relation uh, from Indonesia foreign policy. I think that situation very different. At the time when Indonesia, the first after independence in 1950, that uh, Sukarno led Indonesia, uh, Indonesia have big strong relationship, for the example, with uh, Russia, when uh, that name at that moment is uh, Uni Soviet, and also in the uh, Korea, North Korea also, Jakarta. We have a relationship Indonesia Pyongyang axis, or Indonesia Moscow axis. I think uh, at that moment when uh, Indonesia led uh, Sukarno. And after that, when Indonesia led uh, Suharto in uh, Orde Baru, the close relationship with the West, for the example, with the United States, Europe, and uh, we know Indonesia, uh, we have loan or many, many countries in the West, um, give uh, Indonesia loan of give uh, debt at that moment when Indonesia, uh, we have a close relationship with the West, for the example, with the state, Europe and, 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 and so on. And also, I think if uh, we know Indonesian foreign policy in Jokowi Toto era, we have a uh, many close relationship with many countries. And I think Indonesia want to keep free, independent and active. We also have a close relationship with United States, with European Union, with uh, Russia and with uh, China. And maybe, you know, uh, in the international system, we know uh, the biggest or the strong country now is uh, uh, China and United States. That's where it's also give impact to Indonesia. For the example, about the loan, about infrastructure, we have many debt or loan uh, from United States or from, from uh, China to build infrastructure. For the example, to build uh, Jalan Tol, or toll out because uh, in this era, foreign policy in Joko Widodo have a principal uh, axis maritime or poros maritime dunia. I think it's the uh, several countries who give impact the biggest uh, to Indonesia. Okay. Okay, thank you, Mr. Martin, for the for the answer. Uh, there are several hands, still several hands here. Uh, the next question is from wait, I will see, uh, Miss Sandra Natanya Wijaya. So, for Miss Sandra, you may ask it directly to Mr. Martin. Oh yeah. Um. Okay. So first of all, I think I'm gonna turn off my camera because I'm afraid that the audio would be distorted. Um, so my name is Sandra. I'm an undergrad student. I study tourism at Udayana University. So um, what I'm going to ask is that on the presentation, it said that President Wahid opens up relationship with Israel, right? So what I'm going to ask is that what kind of relationship, because I do know that we do not have diplomatic relationship with Israel yet. And what are the impacts that have that we have felt? Thank you. 
Thank you, Ms. Sandra, for the question. Uh, Mr. Martin, would you please answer the question from Ms. Sandra? Ms. Sandra Natania uh, give question about relationship Indonesia when uh, Abdurrahman Wahid, yeah. Abdurrahman Wahid, we know uh, lead Indonesia government uh, almost uh, 20 months. But um, the popular issue in the Abdurrahman Wahid, um, Abdurrahman Wahid visit many countries in the 20 months in the uh, 80, 80 countries. I think the question is, what's the, the big impact with the visit? Many, many, many criticize. And also relationship about Israel, because you know, uh, in Indonesia, the peace mortality is a population, the biggest Muslim. And you know, I think, uh, how is the, the, the population Muslim in Indonesia look Israel? Yes. And also, um, I think at the Abdurrahman Wahid era after reformation, um, society in Indonesia also want to give influence in the foreign policy, in the foreign policy. And many, many societies in the Indonesia uh, refuse or rejected about relation about uh, Indonesia with the Israel because you know um, Indonesia very close with Palestine and we also support independence with Palestine and I think uh, many many society in Muslim in Indonesia also if Indonesia have a uh, a relationship with uh, Israel, uh, many society in Indonesia think it's uh, not very good relationship Indonesia with the Palestina. But I think Abdurrahman Wahid have um, a reason why Indonesia must must uh, have relationship with Israel. I think many have uh, many several reasons. The first reason is about uh, relation trade and economy. Do uh, Indonesia not have embassy in Israel, but until now I think uh, relation about trade and maybe about military uh, equipment also we have a relationship with Israel. I think it's also a reason why Indonesia must uh, must uh, have relationship with Israel. The second reason is um, if Indonesia want to want to solve the problem about Palestine Palestina issue, Indonesia uh, must get uh, diplomacy with the with the opposite Palestina country. It is uh, Israel. And Abdurrahman Wahid think is how Indonesia uh, could be help solve problem with the Palestinian issue if Indonesia uh, not have communication with Israel. Abdurrahman Wahid think uh, Indonesia will difficult to give solve problem. That's why I think it's a reason why Indonesia um, build relationship with the Israel. Okay. okay. Thank you, Mr. Martin, for the question, the answer. Uh, the next is from Wahyu Ramadinda. So for Ms. Wahyu, Ms. Wahyu Ramadinda, you may ask it directly to Mr. Martin, please. Uh, thank you very much for the moderator. So, uh, good afternoon, Mr. Martin, and all uh, and all of the participants. Uh, my name is Wahyu Rahmadinda from International Relations uh, Universitas Diponegoro. Uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you very much for the uh, wonderful uh, presentation from Mr. Martin. Uh, I guess I have the similar question from uh, Anissa. Uh, so uh, we all know that the foreign policy of many countries was influenced uh, by the culture or maybe uh, approaches like China with their Taoism uh, to claim the nine dice line, or maybe Saudi Arabia with the religion to apply their 
uh, foreign, poli foreign policy and in the presentation you have said that uh, Indonesia has used Japanese rule for the uh, foreign policy when the so Harto regime. So my question is, are there uh, other Indonesian culture, uh, maybe except uh, Japanese that are, that are still influence Indonesian foreign policy in this era or maybe in this uh, President Jokowi, Jokowi Dodo? Uh, thank you, Mr. Martin and the moderator. Thank you so much, Mr. Uh, Ms. Wahyu Ramadinda for the questions. Mr. Martin, would you please to, uh, 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 answer the question from Ms. Rahmadinda. Yes, I think it's an uh, interesting issue about culture and foreign policy, right? And um, we, we, we can see the behavioral politics about the President Indonesia now, Joko Widodo, in the domestic and international relation. I think um, the behavioralism president Indonesia a uh, little similar with uh, uh, when 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 Indonesia at that order baru at Soeharto because the background is uh, Javanese and you know uh, in the domestic we know how how behavior or respond our president. Uh, if uh, when 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 the government have have a problem about criticize uh, from society about demonstration, I think um, Indonesia president very diplomatic to give speech and very and use uh, soft 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 mechanism to give response about situation or problematica in domestic situation. And also if we know the in the international in the in the global era or in the international relation, we know uh, Indonesia when when Jokowi lead also we have many many awarded or many popular in the uh, in the many various level in the in the global i think uh, in several years when when international forum in apec association pacific economic uh, association uh, indonesia standing with the biggest countries like uh, united states russia china and i think uh, not many countries like indonesia and also Indonesia also have a crowd uh, in the economy. We we also join in the G20. That we know, G20 is um, is a uh, is a forum that the country that have uh, good in economic. I think we can we can we can state if. Uh, Foreign policy in the Suharto and in the Jokowi is the same. Uh, have a high profile because when in the Suharto era, Indonesia also become leader in the in the uh, Ketua ASEAN, also active in the in the gerakan non bloc Also in the Jokowi Toto, we have. Uh, many active in the forum multilateral, for the example, G20, ASEAN Pacific Economic Association, and uh, several. And Indonesia also become leader in the uh, the countries who have uh, the largest ocean. Iora, I think it's also organization is very prestigious in the world and. We can we can state Indonesia very high profile foreign policy uh, in that era. Okay. 
Okay, thank you, Mr. Martin, for the answer. Uh, and we're going to move to the other questions from Mr. Marcel. So, Mr. Marcel, you may deliver your question, please. Uh, am I audible? Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Martin. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Marcel. I'm from informatics engineer student from uh, Techno uh, University of Technology, Yogyakarta. Uh, the question is about uh, really diplomacy of the digital uh, in the era of Joko Widodo. That say uh, we 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 see that a prospect for the challenge in Indonesia that is there are a digital diplomacy towards the middle power. So as we the known the country that whose people massively that use social media, that we we are the largest internet users that we do that we have not especially in the social media. And also our president Joko Widodo that uh, tries to fit in in the trend of the social media across in Indonesia. Uh, there are several uh, findings that uh, his words, his words that's including like the meeting agenda and with the leaders and some sometimes is upload uh, the words or like videos and blogs and there are is collaboration with the powerful countries. So. Uh, the first things is uh, is probably we get into the another blocks uh, because we just a uh, few of these these leaders that have in these flocks with uh, a president of Joko Widodo, and then uh, the next is uh, there is a lot of literature that I got from, and that's the diplomacy implemented by Joko Widodo is a uh, ambient is very good. So there's a lot of challenge that uh, we, we don't know about uh, the diplomacy of Indonesia. And the next question is about what is the traits of Indonesia that's used towards middle power with digital diplomacy itself? And I think that's it, sir, uh, for my question. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Marcel, for the question. Please, uh, Mr. Martin, for answering the question from Mr. Marcel. Okay, thank you. Um, I think very interesting issue about diplomacy, digital diplomacy, and Indonesia um, in the categories middle power country. I think um, when in era situation that now revolution industry 4.0, many increase about technology, especially in uh, digital. I think very, very file or very sector uh, use uh, digital to increase or to promote uh, the interest. And we know, we know uh, many sector, for the example, in the government issue, we know a government or uh, digital government and the several issue also use the concept of digital or maybe electronic and also in the issue about diplomacy i think um at that now when uh, digital very increase in the technology um now the equipment or or we can say the equipment or method or mechanism to to diplomacy is just not uh, a person or diplomat but also uh, digital for the example official virtual is also uh, play the role in the diplomacy and if uh, if we can see Many many ambassador from Indonesia also uh, must behave official, official social media. For the example, Instagram, Facebook to promote, to to share about information about Indonesia to promote uh, for the foreign 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 people. I think it's very very useful and benefit and uh, helpful to Indonesia country to promote uh, what, uh, uh, what uh, Indonesia want to achieve a goal. 
maybe for the sector economic investment and so on and also uh, issue about diplomacy digital we must we must weak we still weak about issue uh, cyber attack about security we must understanding if we talk about security is not talk about borderless but also uh, area area is the border is uh, area cyber and indonesia still still not strong and we still not have a uh, military cyber because if we know many big countries or strong strong countries like uh, united states china on several state in europe they have a cyber army to to keep security in the border uh, border border cyber in in this in this country i think like that uh, my question about issue diplomacy digital or cyber attack okay thank you mr martin for the answer and we still have uh, two people here uh, the next question is from Gracelyn Cristianto. So, Miss Gracelyn, you uh, may deliver the questions to the to Mr. Martin, please. Okay, am I audible? Yes. Okay. Hi. Good afternoon, Mr. Martin. First, thank you for the beautifully explained matter, which is really insightful. And Grace would like to ask related to Indonesia's foreign policy. Um, Indonesia's real, uh, national leaders and politicians seem like they have mostly paid attention to domestic issues for the country's upcoming general elections compared to regional and global challenges. Like they don't really pay attention on the global issues, right? So the question is that what do you think about the implementation of the free and active policy of Indonesia so far? Like what are the things that already being done by Indonesia, like when realizing the uh, peace treaty impact, for example, or like the climate change thing. And like, could you please mention one or two concrete action that already being done by Indonesia so far, if possible? I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you for the question, Miss Gracelyn. So, uh, Mr. Martin, would you please uh, answer the question from Miss Gracelyn? I think the question is about how is the implementation about uh, foreign policy in Indonesia, especially about climate change. I think Indonesia, one of the countries, one of developing countries uh, that supports about uh, climate change, climate change issue, especially sustainable development goals. And uh, in the several days ago, we know uh, many debates about the biggest country who give contribute to climate change. We know the several countries is uh, the biggest, the biggest uh, country contribute to climate change. For example, uh, China, also United States, and they have a conflict relationship to, to, to efforts. Who is the country uh, give give or the pay for the developing countries in order to contribution uh, that that country no no contribute with the pollution or cl about climate change and also in the several days also uh, to come to biggest countries uh, have have solution and they 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 won and they maybe they also provide to give to give um, aid to developing countries about to to solve the problem about uh, climate change and also indonesia very active for the example in the 2005 maybe uh, in regularity we Indonesia held an uh, event about uh, climate change issue, UNCC in Bali, United Nations Climate Change, is uh, a forum to, to talk about 
how uh, the country in the world give give us or solve problem about situation very bad about uh, climate change. I think it's a uh, implementation concrete foreign policy in Indonesia and. I think until now Indonesia also active in the uh, various uh, forum or issue about uh, climate change. For the example, United Nations climate change that regularity held in in Bali. That's it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Martin, for the answer. And the last question is come from. De Miss Debbie Cynthia Sitorus. So for Miss Debbie, uh, you may deliver your questions to the to Miss Martin. Oh yeah, am I audible? Yes. Oh yeah, thank you. Uh, I would like to appreciate the uh, the moderator to let me ask question and thank you for Miss Martin for the wonderful presentation. So my question about Indonesian foreign policy is about Indonesian foreign policy. Uh, our fundamental of foreign policy, which is active, free and active foreign policy. Uh, this fundamental was made, this principle made during the Cold War as mentioned uh, before. Uh, however, uh, I think Indonesia have faded this, uh, this fundamental ever since the Suharto come to, come to power, which is in 1967. Uh, as you mentioned also that Indonesia have uh, not really, not really have a, a intensive uh, connection or relation with Russia, which is that time called USSR. And after that, it continue until today. We still not have kind of like the intensive relation with uh, our relation with the US and our relation with the European countries. However, in part two, the past two decades, there is a change of international order before we have two superpowers, which is Russia and the United States now, which is superpowers come, which is China and uh, and the US, right? So in this occasion, Indonesia have already have a good relationship both to China and to United States. We have a great, uh, a great relation with China in terms of economy, especially in their investment, also uh, some of their, also their, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of immigration from China come to Indonesia and also same to Indonesia. We have, in all aspect, we have a good relationship, same as the U.S. because we have relied on the U.S. for our economic development. I think uh, for almost, um, you know, like uh, many many years. I think since the U.S. come to the power of internet, uh, the leader of the global uh, the global environmental environment. So my question is. To what extent do you think this uh, our foreign policy fundamental or principle will apply during this uh, during these changes in international order, which is there is a there is a shifting between the United States and and China? Because I I think I've read a lot of article that says uh, now China is chasing United States before the gap is quite a big because. Uh, still, China is a second, but however, now they they have like kind of like very very little uh, gap between them since China tried to uh, try to expand the relationship. They open the trade. They also stand in human rights. Also stand to promoting education, promoting uh, promoting the peace and stability in global order. So. My question: To what extent Indonesia could stand in this situation, which is? I think this is kind of like we have to uh, to have a good stances here because both countries as greatest countries, both economic and and military or and security, and we have we also have good relation to both of them. So um, my question is, what your opinion and what should Indonesia do, or maybe what uh, what Indonesia have done or the implementation of Indonesia uh, to to uh, to state that Indonesia stances uh, in uh, which is to stay with our principle. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Miss Debbie, for the questions. And would you please uh, answer the question, Mr. Martin? Okay, the question is, how is the position Indonesia with a uh, foreign policy free and active to respond uh, to, to strong and biggest country? For, for the example, like United States and China. I think 
uh, Indonesia must have uh, principle uh, although free and active we must also have principle nationalism also internationalism nationalism we must we must know about how is the interest national interest Indonesia we can get the benefit or mutual benefit with the other countries such as uh, United States what's the what's the Indonesia get or uh, give benefit to that, that that countries to Indonesia for example in economy or trade what's the the benefit when Indonesia uh, have relationship with China what we can get benefit for the example maybe also a loan or uh, to build infrastructure on exact and I think if we we must also keep keep our security says that um, uh, interest with that countries not 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 benefit with Indonesia I think it's um, it's uh, uh, how is Indonesia must respond or position when Indonesia the face in the the biggest two biggest country like uh, United States and China. This is my uh, answer. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Martin. I think uh, the question from Ms. Debbie is the last questions. So uh, thank you for all of the materials and the, the answer from you, Mr. Martin. And I would like to thank for all the participants in this first session. And before we continue to the break time, we will have some photo, photo session. So uh, for all the participants, please turn on your camera and I will count one until three so that the operator can capture the screen. Okay. I will count one until three. And please, the operator, capture the screen. One, two, three. Okay, next. One, two, three. Okay, the last one. One, two, three. Okay, this is the end of the first session. After this, you will have some break and continue the second session. You may leave the room and please go back again at uh, quarter to three for the second session with Mr. Andi Ahmad Basitir. So thank you so much, Mr. Martin. You're welcome. Keep healthy and safety. See you next, everyone. Okay, Mr. Thank you, Pak Martin. See you later. See you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining this first session. We'll we'll see you later uh, on at 3 p.m. Yeah. See you then.